This is an ML350, which means it's a Mercedes built to haul you, your people, and your things off to the cottage on nasty roads like this one in the lack of luxury. It's also a blue tech, which means it runs on diesel, which is appealing. Modern diesels make heaps of torque while not burning through their fuel supply like an orbit-bound rocket thruster, and they no longer produce emissions that you can harvest for chemical warfare. Under all this plastic is the ML's optional 3-liter diesel V6, which runs 240 horsepower and, more importantly, 450 pounds of torque. That's more than even the biggest gas-powered V8 engines on the road today. Power is set permanently to all four wheels through a 7-speed automatic. Performance is interesting. Torque output is on par with a small earthquake, but it's delivered in a shapeless and flat power curve. When you jam the throttle hard enough to finally make the ML gear down and hustle, you just get instant tremendous torque delivered with a quiet and unexciting effortlessness. I think the most remarkable thing for me over the course of a week in this ML Blue Tech has been the engine. When you look at the specifications, 450 pounds of torque and a diesel engine, you start to think that you should get this sensational flood of noise and vibration into the cabin when you put your foot down, but there's nothing. Admittedly, there's a lot of sound deadening under that hood, but you barely hear or feel a peep in the car, even when you drive this thing a little bit hard. So there isn't much exhilaration from the power plant when you hammer down, but holy heck does she ever roll some coal when you give her the boots. This thing hauls. From the driver's seat you get a commanding forward view, steering wheel controls for media and communications, and features like automatic lights, wipers and climate control for set it and forget it operation. The cabin is classy, comfortable and on the understated side, which is nice if you'd rather an interior that doesn't look overdone and styled like a piece of space travel equipment. It's a relaxing, focused and formal environment, and if you like comfy and functional, but not overly stimulating, you'll just love it in here. A fast acting power tailgate adds convenience, there's a pile of room in the cargo hold, and rear seat occupants will have plenty of space. I noted no issues with headroom, even with the panoramic sunroof. The Formatic 4x4 system has no low range or locking mode for serious off-roading, but in most every situation I tossed the ML's way, the computer calling the shots here knew what was up. There was minimal wasted wheel spin, and in some situations you can actually feel it working the power around to extract the most possible traction from the ground beneath. The ride is too nicely between responsiveness and comfort more towards the latter. I picture German engineers sitting around a table debating on suspension calibrations, and what they agreed on sees the ML ride very quietly and with a composed and solid feel over all but the biggest potholes and bumps. Only over these severe washboard surfaces did the ride get uncomfortable and noisy. On the highway, it's laid back, soft footed, and notably quiet without riding like a sponge cake. The steering wheel is locked on and dense at speed, though added power assist for parking makes the wheel light as a feather. Impressively tight turning circle, too. Mileage on my watch landed at 10.2 liters per 100 clicks, even including my heavy-footed filming session in the mid-April mud. That's very impressive, and considerably less fuel than I've put through any number of gas-powered crossovers that had nowhere near this level of power. I also noted fantastic performance from the adaptive Xenon lights, and the Harman Kardon stereo is a beast that will blast your eardrums to kingdom come. So one of my complaints over the course of the week is that, well, look at the controls around the steering wheel. This is the gear shift lever, which should be down here. These are the wiper controls on the end of the turn signal lever, and those should be down on this side, and the cruise control, which should also be on this side, is way down here. It's a little bit confusing, and at the end of the day, it means that you might be going down the highway, go to clear your windshield, and either pop this thing into park or into reverse, and that's gonna be expensive. Also, step in height is a bit high for drivers with shorter legs. All said, here's a ute that provides relaxing, capable, comfortable, and very fuel-efficient operation in virtually any weather or driving situation. If that sounds like your cup of tea, the ML Bluetech should be given your immediate attention alongside comparable diesel-powered machinery from Jeep, Audi, and BMW. Thanks for watching.